So today, of course, we had qualifying of the 2019 Russian Grand Prix, and there was plenty of things of interest that, of course, happened in qualifying in Russia. And today, we are going to go through it right now in this video. Now, before we get into the teams and the drivers and how they really did in the session, let's first look at the results of qualifying that are official, of course, right now. So, for the fourth time in a row... Ferrari and Charles Leclerc take pole position. Lewis Hamilton is P2. Sebastian Vettel is P3. Max Verstappen is P4. Valtteri Bottas P5. And then completing the top 10, Carlos Sainz, Nico Hülkenberg, uh, Lando Norris, Roman Grosjean and Daniel Ricciardo. Getting knocked out in Q2 was Gasly, Perez, Giovinazzi, Magnussen and Stroll. And then knocked out in Q1, Raikkonen, Russell, Kubica, Albon and Kvyat. But now... Let's get into the teams and start at the top and start with Mercedes. Now, with Lewis Hamilton, I think Lewis did the best he could today because, let's be honest, in qualifying trim around this track, given how the Ferrari and Mercedes car is right now, the Mercedes cannot compete with Ferrari at the moment. So I think Lewis has done very well to get into P2. I think that is more so because Sebastian Vettel, let's be honest, today as i'll get onto in a moment is not quite performing as well as he should do but still considering that lewis hamilton you know will be starting the race on a medium compound tire starting p2 is very very good for him and as long as in the race he can get to you know or not get to but you know finish or be at least uh, p2 at the end of the first lap then i think going into the rest of the race lewis hamilton and mercedes are in a very strong position to continue the team's of course 100 percent win record around this track so definitely watch out for them tomorrow they're going to be very strong valtteri bottas p5 he'll start p4 because of max verstappen's penalty but that is not good enough by Valtteri. Simply not good enough. He should have been closer, a lot closer, if he was going to be outqualified anyway by Lewis Hamilton. But yeah, not good enough. And the only good thing, I guess, for Valtteri Bottas is that he starts the race on the medium compound tyre. So he will be on the better tyre for the race to start with. But um, it's not looking great, I think, for Valtteri Bottas. But going into now Ferrari... It is looking great for them. Charles Leclerc on pole position. Again, Ferrari's fourth consecutive pole with Charles Leclerc getting his fourth consecutive pole. Charles Leclerc was never going to be beaten today. Never going to happen because he has been the best driver, I think, so far this weekend. He's dominated the weekend. And that Ferrari car, again, in qualifying trim, is all around the best car on the grid so yeah Charles Leclerc great job he was not too far away from the lap record he was about a tenth and a half away so would have been nice to see him get that but still to be half a second basically clear of the next person is a very very good job by him and he is looking very good for the race tomorrow Sebastian Vettel though I'm sorry, not good enough. Nowhere near good enough, I'm afraid, for Sebastian Vettel. Qualifying third isn't necessarily bad here because, of course, down to turn one, you can get a great run and, you know, you can easily get into a high position because of you getting a slipstream down to turn one. And, of course, with the straight line speed of the Ferrari, you never know. He could reclaim P2 or even P1 even. But to qualify third... And be half a second, basically, off his teammate is poor. He's a four-time world champion. And it's not like this track is poor for him. You know, he's finished on the podium here before. He's been competitive here before. I know Charles Leclerc's good here. But to be half a second off, I just don't understand where his pace in qualifying has gone. In Spa, he was, what, seven tenths down on Leclerc? In Singapore, he didn't get it together. I just don't understand where his qualifying pace has gone. It just hasn't really come back 
since that great performance in Canada. So yeah, poor by Vettel and he has to get into the top two positions by the end of the first lap if he's going to help his team win another race and if he's going to have any chance of finishing, I think, really on the podium because, again, the two Mercedes cars starting on the medium tyres are going to be very, very quick in the race tomorrow. But now going on to Red Bull... Max Verstappen did very well today. I think Max got the best out of the car. Let's be honest, the Red Bull isn't, you know, great right now. And um, it is quite surprising that Max Verstappen has been able to qualify in P4. Of course, he'll start in P9. But I think if the front four, you know, Leclerc, Hamilton, Vettel, Bottas, if they can get a bit held up, and not be, you know, far ahead of the midfield. There's no reason why Max Verstappen, you know, can't be really getting up there with them. Because, of course, last year he was leading the race for quite a long time. Of course, when he hadn't pitted. But he started that race in 2018 last year from the back of the grid. So, don't count out Max Verstappen. There's no reason why Max Verstappen cannot get in that fight for a podium. Alex Albon, though, very, very poor. Crashing out qualifying at the back of the grid. He's now going to start at the back. Very poor. And I have to say, going forward, he is not looking good, is Albon. His pace in Singapore was not good. I know it was his first time there, but still not good. And this weekend, his pace compared to his teammate has been quite poor. It really has been quite poor. And... This is a track that Albon has raced at, so you can't give me that excuse of, oh, you know, Albon doesn't, you know, hasn't raced here before. He has. He's won here before in Formula 2. So his performance this weekend cannot be excused, I'm afraid. And he has to be doing a lot better than he is at the moment. But for Red Bull tomorrow, they just need to go for it and uh, see what happens. But now getting into the midfield, first off, Renault Hulkenberg did very well. P7, he qualified and he'll start on the third row with Carlos Sainz. Daniel Ricciardo uh, qualified P10, he'll start in P10. For Hulkenberg, very, very good drive. I think he did slightly better Hulkenberg than he was probably expected to do. And I think he's really showing Renault the mistake that I think they've made in getting rid of Hulkenberg because I don't see Esteban Ocon really being a massive step up on what Nico has done in 2019. So I think Nico, again, you know, showing that he is absolutely worthy of being in that car and great performance by him. Hopefully he can replicate that tomorrow. Daniel Ricciardo did very well to get into the top 10, uh, top 10. but, um, Daniel just hasn't got the pace this weekend compared to his teammate. That's why he ended up at the back of that midfield pack in the final part of qualifying. Because he doesn't have the pace around this track. He never has. If you look at his Red Bull days, he never had a good result here. So it's not a surprise that Daniel Ricciardo, you know, has ended up in P10. But Renault... Their grid position is slightly better than I expected it to be. And going into the race, hopefully from their point of view, they can um, replicate that result because they absolutely have to. Next up, McLaren, P6 and P8. First up, Carlos Sainz did very, very well. Uh, congratulations really to him to being you know so quick and finishing in sixth place. Very nice lap. Very surprising that he got that because he has been uh, consistently slower than Lando Norris this weekend. But then when it mattered most, he got the lap together and got to P6. Lando Norris in P8. I think Lando could have done better today. I think he could have done better. I think, you know, again, this weekend he has been faster than Carlos. But then when it mattered, he did not get it together and... That's the real difference at the moment between Sainz and Norris is that when it matters, Sainz is able to really, you know, get the results needed. Norris is very, very good, but he isn't quite as clinical as Carlos Sainz is at the moment. But good for McLaren, P6 and P8. 
hopefully a good race tomorrow from P5 and P7 on the grid. Next up, Alpha. Alpha have a really bad car this weekend. Um, Antonio Giovinazzi, the man on your screen, did very well to qualify in 13th, and he'll start from P12. And again, Antonio Giovinazzi is doing really well this season. He really is doing well this season. He's out qualifying Raikkonen a lot more and outperforming Kimi Raikkonen. So great by Antonio. And I'm really pleased to see that Antonio is getting, at the moment, the best out of the car. So very nice by Antonio. Kimi Raikkonen knocked out in Q1. Very disappointing, but the Alpha again just is not getting to grips with this track. But for Alpha Romeo tomorrow, they have got to score points. Because if they don't, then I think really their 2019 is over. Because I think they still have a realistic shot at P5 in the Constructors. But um, if they don't score points tomorrow, it's over when it comes to that. Next up is Haas. And I have to say, I've given them criticism before. but Good, uh, good performance there by Roman Grosjean, of course, who was on screen. P9, very, very good. Out-qualifying Kevin Magnussen by an absolute mile. And as I've said before, though, Roman has this where, you know, Singapore, he had a weekend where he was nowhere, but then he'll have another weekend a week later where he is really quick and... This is another case of that. So good by Roman. Hopefully he can finish in the top 10. Realistically, I don't think that will happen because I, I still don't think the Haas is quite ready yet for a points finish. Um, but they will be very quick in the race tomorrow. No doubt about it. So watch out for the Haas F1 team in the race. Uh, Toro Rosso, not that great of a day. Pierre Gasly, I thought, did pretty well to finish in P11. And he'll start the race now from 16th place. Daniel Kvyat didn't do qualifies. There's no point talking about him. Uh, but yeah, Gasly, I think, did pretty well. But of course, he'll start from P16. Hopefully, he can do a similar race to Singapore. But Toro Rosso just don't really have that great of a car this weekend. And it is a shame because they are still P5. Uh, not P5, sorry, P6 in the Constructors, and only 12 points, I believe, behind Renault. So, a bit disappointing, but there is a race tomorrow, and you never know what could happen. And the last midfield team is Racing Point. And I am disappointed with the two Racing Point drivers, because Sergio Perez did not improve his final run in Q3, uh, not Q3, in Q2, sorry, and that is what cost him getting into the top 10. So, not good enough, and Lance Stroll... Made quite a big error at turn 8, I believe, or turn 7. And that also cost him getting a better grid position than he got, which was P15. So, disappointing, really, for Lance and Sergio and for the team. Because I think they could have got a car into the top 10. But, uh, of course, they did not do that. But the race pace, I think, will be fine. And I think racing point, you know, Perez starting, I believe, in P11. And Stroll will start the race in P14, I believe. They they could easily, um, you know, score points. No doubt about it. They could easily score points. By the way, if my voice sounds a bit weird, my throat is very sore. So that's why it sounds weird. But uh, yeah, for racing point, as I was saying, um, they can score points. No doubt about it. But uh, it's going to be a hard fight. And then, of course, Williams are at the very back. But guys, that's it for this review of qualifying. Don't forget to join me tomorrow for the race watch along at 10 past 11 a.m. UK time. And I'll see you all guys then for what's going to be definitely an interesting Russian Grand Prix.